Okay, so I got this skill 10 inch dual bevel sliding miter saw. It was well reviewed online and it's one of the better reviewed lower middle end miter saws. And Skill is also a company that has a relatively good reputation for being on the lower end of cost. So some of the features this thing has, it's a dual bevel sliding miter saw. It's got an LED shadow line, which I'm actually really interested to see. With the, the miter saw that I have, that's just a chop saw, you gotta kinda line up where the cut is, and I'm always looking under trying to see, you know, am I cutting right? And this should make that go a lot faster. Honestly, lining that up is the longest portion of my cut. So if I can undo that when I've got literally, I've got 80 some pickets that I need to cut down to size right now for, for projects that I have going out the door. That's gonna save me time, even if it's just a few seconds each time. Tonight I have two projects that I have to get done because they need to be delivered tomorrow. So I just really need to get this in the game. All right, I'm gonna put this on the ground here. There we go. Surprising kind of how how small it pulls down. So I went to a few box stores looking at these, and obviously I, I'm not in the market for a super expensive one because I was just trying to reinvest money that I've made off of projects recently. So I'm not, I'm not going for like a six, $800 one, but out of all the ones that were on the, the lower to lower middle end, this one to me, it just seemed to have the most features. It just seemed to be more solidly built, much more polished, polished of a finish. And overall, it just, it just looks better to me. And it, it looks like you get more for your buck. So I went with this one. Also, when I tried at the store, when I tried the, the uh, sliding, I tried to wiggle it back and forth it had absolutely zero play, which is what you want because you don't want to be jerking it back and forth and affecting your cut. And that to me, for the lower end ones, it was the only one that had really zero play when I tried it out. Interesting. So it's got this little, little tool, adjuster tool that just kind of goes in there. Let's try to get this thing straightened up here. All right, so we want it. How do we do this? Oh, there you go. Want it on zero. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Let's see what we got here. Got an instruction book. Another fence that's got to be put on. The catch bag. A handle. And a hold down clamp here. Boom. Catch pin. All right, I'm gonna put this on zero, and we're gonna we're gonna test. Oh, it snaps in on zero. Nice. Yeah, I guess it snaps at the at the different locations there. We're gonna test that zero is really zero, 45 is really 45 on both bevels and all that. Okay, this goes in here somewhere. All right, this. Put this to zero. Oh, it, it snaps in at zero as well. Nice, I like that. Let's see where else it snaps in. It snaps in at 15, at 22.5, 30, 31.6, 45. Nice, it snaps in at the angles that you would want. So that's, that's actually pretty handy. As long as it's zeroed in properly, it's nice that it snaps in where it's supposed to. Also, it's got rubber on the bottom here, so it's not just metal sitting on here. It's got a nice little grip on the, on this. This is the little hold down deal. And that you, you can put on either side from the looks of it. It 
they give you a little tool that fits it but you you can only go that far with it and the other end you can't do the fast adjustment because it's got a Phillips head on there so let me get one that'll actually work a little faster I really am liking this eventually I'll get a stand for it all right we got this little dust bag here kind of curious how fast this is gonna fill up I'm guessing very all right and you can lock this from sliding with this little deal here just tighten that down and then it doesn't slide all right these work supports come out relatively easily and then lock into place both of these uh, fences here move in and out apparently so that you can swivel this and cut down at an angle the blade is decent it is a extra fine finish 40 carbide teeth 10 inch blade am i missing anything let me know in the comments below am i missing anything as far as the features oh this does have the led thing um let's get a little closer look at that Are you see how loud it is oh yeah yeah let's see what this looks like oh i'm so curious about this light Put it right there, clamp it down. This helps hold it nice and tight. Ooh, that, yeah, that's decent. Not perfect, but decent. All right, let's see what this, oh, that shadow light is so cool. It's gonna make it so much easier and faster to line up stuff right where you, you gotta see this. So. Can you see that? Can you see exactly where the shadow of the blade is? It's touching the shadow. Not only can you see the shadow of the blade, you can see where the teeth are. You can see the exact thickness. Whoever thought of this is a genius. This is better than a laser because with the laser, sometimes you're like, well, where exactly is it on the left or right or dead center of the laser? Sometimes you don't know. But with this, you're seeing the shadow of the blade itself you know exactly where it's gonna be. See how it perfectly is on that shadow? It's kind of hard to see from an angle, but when you're on top of it, you can see it's dead on. Okay, here we go. Okay. Let's see, is it square? Oh yeah, that zero's on. Yeah. Now let's see if it's on this way. Oh yeah. They got it dialed in. Nice. That's basically what you want there. All right, let's try a quick 45. See what we can do here. Beautiful. Let's see if that's actually a 45 degree angle real quick. Yeah, perfect. Perfect 45. If anything could make you want one of these saws, if you know about the trial and tribulation about trying to get a perfectly matching, perfectly touching 45 then you know it's definitely worth it. Especially without my table saw being in. Let's uh, make sure this 45 is in square as well. Yeah. Yep, good to go. Well, I'm gonna mess around with it some more. I'm gonna use it for this project that I gotta get done tonight. I'm spending way too much time filming. I, I gotta get 
Got to get some stuff done here. I got a few builds going on that I got to deliver over the next couple days. And I will let you know exactly what I think of it. So far, so good. Hey guys, so that was June. It's now December, so it's been about six months since I've been using this miter saw. So real quick, I'm gonna go over some functions of the saw. You have this little thing where you can easily change the angle of the saw and nail it in there at different angles. And then you have a little tightener right here that tightens that deal so that it doesn't just go back and forth on you. These fences move in and out depending on what you need for what type of cut or storage or whatnot. These material support pieces also move in and out with a hex nut on the back. It is kind of super convenient that you can just squeeze this, come along, and when you drag it, it goes into the next cut that's a common, common angle cut. It'll stop. There's there's basically a detent at all the common angle cuts, and it just goes down and stops at that angle. You also have this thing right here. So if you want to do partial cuts that don't go all the way through the material, you can screw that out, and then it stops on the material here, and you can set the depth with which this will go. So if, if you want to do a, like a lap joint of some kind. You can do it that way. This is your detent pin there to keep this down. You can also keep this, if you just want to keep this in one spot, you turn that and then this thing doesn't move in and out and you can just use it like a regular chop saw or that can be done for storage as well. The dust collection, as far as the bag goes, works okay. I wouldn't say it's great, but that's a common issue with these miter saws. And I have a few thoughts for you on it. The first one is that I absolutely love this saw. It has taken over the primary saw responsibilities from my table saw now. I just use it so much more, especially when I'm doing construction type of work, but it also does a good job of doing fine detail cuts as well. I also have two favorite things I like about this saw. My two favorite things are one, this hold down clamp, which is kind of unique. So. You can just push down on this and then hold that and it clamps your material in securely. And when you've made your cut and need to move it over, it's that quick to move along. And then you're down over like that. It's really quick. And if you look at a lot of the miter saws that are in the price range of this one, they have a screw down version. So you have to screw it down and then unscrew it. And it's just a much longer process than the hold down clamp on this one. As a matter of fact, if I had one of those other saws, I would buy one of these and use it with that saw because I find it that useful. And when you're making a lot of cuts, seconds each time saves a lot of time. My second favorite thing about this saw is the shadow cut line. I showed you that before, but this thing is just it revolutionizes the speed and the accuracy with which you can make cuts on a miter saw and I'm really, I'm not overstating it. It was a game changer for me. I did end up buying a stand for it as you can see. This is one of the only stands I could find that actually match the color scheme of it and I'll put a link for that down below if you're interested. This, this one's from Protocol. The miter saw in combination with the stand is even better than just the miter saw because if you don't know, with one of these stands, you can set your stop and measure from the stop to the blade and lock it down and then just make repeatable cuts over and over again. And you have your 
you have your distance so you just do it over and over again and you have the same exact length of board each time and for me that made a big difference because with my outdoor raised garden beds that I'm building I'm cutting down pickets for that because they're pressure treated and literally making up to hundreds of cuts to do that and being able to set that and just cut each one without measuring without looking at it again it, it just goes so much faster and raises my profitability actually because my dollars per hour made goes way up when I can get faster from something like this. By the way, if you're interested in hearing about me starting my woodworking business and becoming a professional woodworker, I do have an upcoming video about that. So hit subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified when that comes out. One nice thing about having a newer model miter saw like this is you can actually get the parts. They're cheap and they're quickly available. A lot of my older tools, if I try to find replacement parts, sometimes I just can't. And this, what happened, I made a dumb mistake and I effectively tried to feed a 4x4 block up into the dust collection port and destroyed the dust collection port. But I was able to go online and quickly get another plastic housing for it and replace it on there and it was cheap and it was good to go. I really like that aspect of having a newer model saw as well. And I'll say just from the last six months and how this saw's held up, how it's, how it's done for me, it doesn't bog down. I haven't had any issues with it other than, you know, the dumb mistake I made. I truly believe that this saw is the best saw available for the money today. If you go on Amazon and look at all the reviews on this saw, you'll see that a lot of people think the same thing. I will have a link down below where you can purchase this saw on Amazon if you're interested in it. Any purchase on there does give me a small kickback and it kind of helps support this channel and gives me a little money to buy tools to review or do projects to do videos on. I also will have a link as I mentioned to this protocol stand or the current version of it.